we talk about the, the new topic, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about the quiz on last Friday. Last Friday, we have a quiz and testing you how to use Maxwell's equation to understand the generated electric field by changing magnetic field. So th there is uh, a figure, we have circular electric field. And uh, the question number one is, can this electric field exist? Yes or no, and it's shown by, uh, by the reason. You see, we have a circular electric field. So the circular electric field actually is existed in the world because if we had to change magnetic field, then we will induce electric field. So we can um, see the answer is yes. And the circular electric field um, can be created by change magnetic flux. If we have change magnetic flux, we can generate a circular electric field. And you can think about if we have a magnetic field point into the page, and if the magnetic field uh, decrease with time, for example, we have time, we have magnetic field, it decrease. Then the change of the uh, flux goes into, let me see, uh, if it goes into the page, then the electric field should goes clockwise. So if we want to have the electric field goes counterclockwise, the magnetic field should increase. Should increase uh, this one. Okay. If it increase, then we will generate the electric field goes counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, so this is number one. Number two, does the electric field arise from a charge distribution? Yes or no? So if we have any charge distribution, no matter what uh, this charge distribution is, the electric field should look like a radiation. So we have uh, electric field start from the positive charge and to the negative charge. So it look like this. And we also find this is a electric field distribution. And you will find that if we take um, this charge off, take this charge, you will find this electric field actually looks like some, some source. This is the source. And this are the hole. This is also a hole. So we have a uh, electric field start from somewhere and end to somewhere. The electric field doesn't look like a circular. So the question is no. The answer is no, because the electric field cannot be generated circular electric field. Circular electric field can be created by point charge. The point charge and the distribution is like a radiation, something like this. So the radiation never give us a circular uh, electric field. This is number two, number three. Uh, which of the following equations would imply the existence of such an electric field? And there's only one choice is correct. So let's look at this one by one. The number one, the electric field generated by uh, a charge over the distance square. This is the electric field created by a point charge. This is Coulomb's law. If we have point charge, then the electric field generated by this point charge has uh, equal to 
a constant times the charge, the value of charge over the distance. So this is not created by change in magnetic field. Number two, electric field equal to a constant times the density of charge over the radius. This is the expression of a uh, charge of wire. So if you are not familiar with this, I tell you if we have a wire with uniform charge distribution, this is a wire, then the electric field created by this charge of wire is expressed in this way. Then we can use Gauss's law to draw a cylinder because we know the electric field distribution is a radiation. Like this. This is the electric field uh, lines. And to calculate the electric field, we can draw a cylinder to enclose the charge of wire. And the cylinder and the wire are parallel. Then you can find that the electric field only has flux on the side surface. The left surface and the right surface doesn't contribute to the flux because the two surfaces are parallel to the electric field. Then we have the flux equal to electric field times the area of the side surface. The side surface could be expressed in the 2 pi r, the co um, this is circumference of the of the circle times the length the length of the cylinder okay then this is equivalent to the charge in the cylinder over the epsilon naught okay then we can solve the electric field that will be equal to the one over two pi epsilon naught q charge over the l over the r Okay, and then we know the charge inside the cylinder is Q, and the cylinder has a length of L, so this is the charge density. So we can replace this guy by lambda. So we have lambda over R. So we have this one. This is uh, an electric field created by um, charge of Y. But this is not our option because it only creates radiation uh, electric field, not a circular electric field. Uh, the next two equations are from Maxwell's equation. To understand the Maxwell equation, we only need to know where the time derivative is. So the time derivative here is a change of electric flux. This is a change of electric flux. And this one is change of magnetic flux. The change of magnetic flux is going to generate electric field. The change of electric flux is going to generate magnetic field. So in this case, we are going to pick up the force equation. This is going to give us a circular electric field distribution. And number five, we have electric field generate equals to the minus gradient of the potential. And the potential is equal to Q over four pi epsilon non R. This is a potential expression by a point charge. So this is not uh, meet our requirement. So we'll pick up Number four, this is the correct answer. Do you have any question? If not, let's move to the um, circuit. Okay, in the circuit today, I'm going to talk about Ohm's law, resistance, capacitor, and the capacitance. If we have more time, I'm going to talk about the inductor. And so first one, for the resistance or the capacitance, 
or anything in the circuit, the best way to have a circuit is a, a wire. We have a wire right here. <clears throat> the circuit. The circuit we have, we need four elements to have a circuit. So if we want to um, turn on our light, turn on the microwave oven, or use any um, house electricity and facilities, we need a battery. So this is a power source. Power source. The power source could be any uh, electricity plug, or if you have any battery, um, commercial battery, or you have um, a solar cell, or anything that can provide electricity is called a power source. We have, for example, we have battery. And in the circuit, the battery has a symbol. The symbol is two lines, the short line and the long line. And we have a wire connect these two lines. And you have um, need you need to know the short line means negative terminal, and the long line means positive terminal. So the battery has orientation. This is for the erect circuit called the DC circuit or DC circuit power source. But if we have alternating circuit, for example, if the, the power source provides a um, oscillation function, like a sine function, cosine function, then um, the positive terminal and the negative terminal is not always at the same place. So in this case, we use another symbol to represent the battery. We use a wave, in the circle, to represent the battery. So this is for the alternating circuit, we call the AC circuit. Okay, so we have two battery. For the, for the first battery, if we have a current output at the function time, the uh, current should be a constant. And in the second one, if we have alternating circuit, the current is a function of time. So this is a two kind of power source. And after we have power source, we need wire to connect the power source with the equipment. With wire, we need many wires. So the wire should be a conductor. Okay. And in the physics, all the wire, we don't think the wire will consume energy. So any wire is ideal wire, no energy loss on the wire. So no resistance, but in reality, the wire is going to consume some energy. And if you have very high voltage or very um, big current and the resistance of wire is very large, then it will consume a lot of energy. Many energy is going to lost on the way, right? So this is wire, the second equipment. And the third one, we need a switch. The switch, we have switch like this. So we need to control when the equipment is on, when the equipment is off. So we use a switch to um, control the close of the circuit. If the circuit is closed, then everything is working. If the switch is on, it's open, then um, the, the equipment doesn't work and there's no electricity and the current doesn't flow. And most important, we should have equipment. For example, we have microwave oven, we have lamp, we have speaker, we have microphone. So any, anything that you can think will consume uh, the electricity, so the computer, anything. So when we have these four elements, then we can connect them together. So we have a battery. Suppose this is a DC circuit. AC. Okay, positive terminal, negative terminal, then connect with the switch. 
the line means wire. Okay? Then connect with switch and equipment. Okay, so this is how a circuit looks like. And the circuit give us um, some um, physical properties. The first one is voltage of the battery. And we use capital V, represents the voltage, and the unit is volt. And uh, the voltage is going to um, provide energy to the equipment. And when the uh, the circuit is closed, the circuit is closed, there will be current. The current flow from the positive terminal to the equipment then go back to the negative terminal. And on this uh, wire, any point of this wire shares the same uh, current. So the current here is equal to current at here current out of here, current out of here. The current is equivalent anywhere. Uniform, so we can find the current at one place is bigger than the other place. So we have the current in the circuit. So we use capital I to represent the current and the unit is ampere. Okay. And we find a useful uh, result. That is, if we increase the battery's voltage, then we will increase the current and the relation is linear. So this is an uh, experiment discovered by Ohm. I, a physicist, oh, and we use the ratio of the voltage to the current to define the resistance of the equipment. So any equipment will uh, has, every equipment has a resistance and the resistance, we use capital R to represent the resistance. This is, um, equivalent to the voltage over the current. So the voltage um, between two end of the equipment and the current is the current through, flowing through the equipment. Then the ratio is called the resistance. And the resistance has a unit. So that will be the voltage's unit volt over the current unit ampere. And this is defined as ohm. This is omega. Because we want to give credit to, to ohm. So we use his name uh, to name uh, the unit of the resistor. So the resistance has one ohm is actually equal to one volt per ampere. So this is the unit of the resistor. And also, if we have two equipment, or two facility, two lamps, let me use two lamps two pieces of equipment, and I use a cross and a circle to represent the lamp. Okay. And I want to connect these two lamps into the circuit. So I have a battery, positive and negative. How can I connect these two lamps into the circuit? So the first way to connect them is to connect them in series connect them like this, right? 
So I just connect them in series. So this is series connection. Then after you have this connection, um, we can go to calculate uh, the current and the voltage for each lamp. And suppose the total voltage of the battery is V, is total. And the voltage between the first lamp, the first lamp, second lamp, the voltage of the first lamp is V1. And the voltage between the second lamp is V2. Then we have the relation um, V1, V2, and the total voltage. So the total voltage is the sum of the voltage for each lamp. That will be the V1 plus V2. And if we check the current, the current through the battery is I, the current through the second lamp is I2, the current through the first lamp is I1, then we know for this circuit, currents are equivalent anywhere. So I should equal to I1 equal to I2. This is called um, relation of the voltage and the current in the series circuit. So this is uh, Kirchhoff law in serious connection. Kirchhoff's law. Okay. Then we have another way to connect this to lamp. So here I have a battery, and I have one lamp. I have the other lamp, and then we can connect the lamp um, with the battery separately. Connect them, it works. And for the second lamp, I connect also uh, to the two terminals of the circuit, of the battery. So in this case, I connect this two lamp separately. The, the advantage of this connection is that if one lamp doesn't work, suppose this doesn't work, it doesn't affect the second lamp. The second lamp is still working. But for the first connection, if this lamp doesn't work, then the circuit break. The second one doesn't work too. So if the second one doesn't work either, then we don't know which lamp is unfunctional. But for the second connection, if this lamp doesn't work, we know this lamp is unfunctional, but the second one is still uh, working because uh, the current is separate, uh, not this way, current is separate on each path, then it go to the negative terminal. So the current flows separately. We call this connection as Parallel connection. Okay. So to draw the circuit diagram, I could join this way in series. We have a battery connected with two lamps. Okay. But in parallel, we connect them separately. So this is um, the way how we connect two elements, two pieces of element. And you also um, can find the relation of the current and the voltage. So for the first one, we have current equivalent anywhere. So this is I1, this is I2, and the voltage one, voltage two, and the voltage for the battery. Voltage will be the V1 plus V2. There's a relation in the series connection. For the parallel connection, we have current 
one current two and the total current and the current actually are not the same because the current flow this way and come to this node then it is separate go to two paths then the separate current collect gathered at this node then it flow back this is the direction of the current flow so the current the total current to the battery is equivalent to the sum of each path sum of current on each path and for the voltage let's take a look for the voltage the voltage of the battery from here to here is the voltage and the voltage of the lamp lamp one is from here to here it's a v1 and the v2 is here v2 so this two volt other uh, three voltage share the same nodes this one and this one because the potential on the same node is the same this is a potential one v1 or we can use another label here's potential Electro potential one. This is electro potential two, and the V voltage um, between the between the battery on the both side of the battery is equal to the potential one minus the potential two. And um, the voltage across the, uh, the lamp one, the first lamp is also equal to the potential one minus potential two. And the voltage across the lamp two, second lamp is equal to this one. So the voltage is equivalent anywhere. So this is a relation and for parallel connection. So if we call this relation, this two and this two, as Kirchhoff's law. Okay, so let me take a pause. Do you have any other question? Okay, then I'm going to move to the capacitor. And the capacitor actually is, um, let me see, a little bit tricky. So capacitor actually are two plates, two conducting plates, parallel and very big, connect with battery. In this case, we use a direct battery, direct circuit, Positive terminal, negative terminal. Okay, so when we connect the capacitor with the battery, the battery is going to charge the capacitor. That means the positive charge is going to flow through the wire to the top plate. There will be many positive charge on the plate. And the negative charge is going to flow to the bottom side, there will be many negative charge on the bottom side. And the charge, the value of charge on the top should be equal to the value of charge on the bottom. So they are here existence. Okay. Then after the steady state, after the charge is done, the charge on the plate Are stable and the positive charge and negative charge attract them together and when you move the battery off the charge will stay on the plate and the charge cannot move okay so after 
the charge. The charging process is done. The cube remain on the top on the on the plate. Okay, but if you use a wire to connect these two plates, so we use a wire. To connect these two plates, then the charge is going to flow to neutralize the other side, right? In this case, if we have a wire connecting with these two plates, and the charge will decay. And we call this process is decharging. Okay, in this case, if we have a diagram of charge as a function of time, at the beginning is there's a value, then it goes down, goes to zero. Okay. Then that's wait, it. Joe. Yeah. Do you mean like like first you charge it with a voltage source and then you remove that voltage source and you just have the wire now? Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That's I was just a bit confused. So the first one is charging. Then I remove the battery. Then I connect them by wire. Then uh, the charge is gone. And let's see. The next one is uh, we want to know the capacitance of the capacity. And so here, um, how many charge can the capacitor uh, have for each case? We find that if we increase the voltage, we will increase the charge. So this is a good hint for us to understand the process of charge. We can use the ratio of these two value to define the capacitance. So we define the capacitance as capital C equal to the charge over the voltage. If we increase the charge, if we want to increase the charge, we have to increase the voltage. And we find the ratio doesn't change if the geometry of the capacitor doesn't change. This is a capacitance. Then let's check the unit. And the value, the unit of the Q is coolant over a voltage is volt. And we want to give credit to Freddy and to memorize and his contribution to the electromagnetic induction. Then we have uh, used his name to name the unit of the capacitance. So one F actually is equal to one coulomb per volt. So we use Friday to name the unit of the capacitance. And uh, um, usually the, this unit is very large. We cannot have one F uh, capacitance. Um, usually we use mu F or N F as a unit. So mu f is a micron Friday and nf is nano Friday. One mu f is 10 to the negative 6 f, and one nf is 10 to the negative 9 f. Okay, then let's see. How can we change the capacitance? We know if we want to change the charge. Um, we only need to change the battery, but can we change the capacitance? And let's do the calculation a little bit. We know between the two plates, the voltage here and the electric field is a constant. And the distribution of the, uh, of the electric field is uniform. 
in between. And the electric field actually is equal to the voltage over the spacing between the two plates. So we have the electric field in the capacitor is voltage over D. D is the distance between two plates. So we have uh, this equation C equal to Q over V. Then voltage is equal to E times D. Then let's calculate the electric field. For the capacitor, the charge are on the surface and the electric field are in between. And there's no electric field outside of the plate. So the electric field outside is zero. Then we can draw a box, sketch a box. and as a Gaussian surface. And we find that this box has six surfaces. And the top surface, the electric field equal to zero. So the flux equal to zero. And the side surface, there are four side surfaces. This four side surface are parallel to the electric field. So the flux is also equal to zero. So only the bottom surface is perpendicular to the electric field. So there's only surface that contribute to the electric flux. So according to the Gaussian's law, we have E times the area of the side of the bottom surface is equivalent to the charge into these two plates into this box over the epsilon naught. Then we can calculate the electric field equal to the Q over area of the plate over the epsilon naught. Okay, then we plug the electric field into this relation. We will have C equal to Q over E times D equal to the Q over electric field could be written in Q over A epsilon long D. So that will be huge cancels. We have area epsilon long is a constant over D. Okay, this equation is a determinant of capacitance. So that means if we want to change the capacitance, we have two ways to do. One is to change the area of the plate. Or we can change the spacing between two plates. And if they're closer, very close, or the surface is very big. Then we will have very big capacitance. If the two plates are far away and the area is very small, then we will have very small capacitance. Okay. So this is uh, the capacitor and the capacitance. Okay, do you have any question? Then let's uh, see if we um, connect them in the circuit, what will happen. So if I have a battery, use another color, I have a battery connect with two capacitor. Capacitor symbol is two bar, but they, uh, they have the same side. Yeah. Same length is the capacitor. C1, C2. So the capacitance 
are equal to C1 and C2. And the voltage is V. Okay. So what's the total capacitance if we connect the two capacitor in series? In series, let's do this. We know the voltage across the C1 and the C2 has a relation that is uh, V equal to V1 plus V2. Right? And we have another relation, that's the charge. So the positive charge is going to flow this side. Then we will have many positive charge on this side. Then on the right side, there will be many negative charge. As a negative charge is going to flow to this side, there will be many negative charge. And on the other side, there will be many positive charge. And you will find that the negative charge on this side is equal to the positive charge on this side. And because the number of charge are equivalent, and there's no new charge in the circuit, because when we take out the, uh, the battery and use a wire to connect this to capacitor, everything will be neutral. So that means the charge on the C1 is equal to the charge on C2. So in this case, let's calculate the capacitor. Capacitance of the C1 equal to the Q1 over the V1, C2 equal to the Q2 over the V2, right? Let's do the inverse. We have one over C1 equal to V1 over Q1, one over C2 equal to V2 over Q2. Then we add them together, V plus one over C2 equal to the V1, Q1 plus V2 over Q2. We know the Q2 and the Q1 equivalent so we use q to represent and we have v1 plus v2 the voltage on both capacitor with some then is the total voltage right That's the total voltage over the q so this is equal to the total capacitance and we'll do the inverse so that means if we connect two capacitor in series the total capacitance has a relation with each of the capacitance. This is in series. Okay. So if we connect them in parallel, C1 is C2, and we know the voltage on the C1 is V1, the voltage on C2 is V2, and the voltage on the battery is V. When we connect them in parallel, we know the V are equivalent for each equipment. And also uh, for the charge, let's see, the charge flow to this side and some of the charge goes, goes up, some of the charge goes down. So the charge, total charge, actually is equal to the sum of the charge for each uh, capacitor. So that will be the Q1 plus Q2. Then let's calculate the total capacitance. The total capacitance, C, one equal to the Q1 over V1, C2 equal to Q2 over V1, V2. And I sum them, I have Q1 over V1 plus Q2 over V2. The voltage are the equivalent, so we can use the V to represent equal to Q1 plus Q2. And this is the total voltage for the numerator. So we have the Q over V. This is a total capacitance. So that means if I connect two capacitor in parallel, then the total capacitance 
is equivalent to the C1 plus C2. This is in parallel. Okay. So uh, I think this is what I'm going to talk today. Uh, we talk about the circuit and the Ohm's law and the capacitor, capacitance and uh, the connection in series and in parallel. So I think those are the basic idea how we use the circuit and to do the connection. And I think next the class, I'm going to talk about the inductor and that will be another useful equipment in the circuit. So um, do you have other questions? If no, uh, let's see you on the Friday. Have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.